I have here the best sermon this side of the moon, but I'm not going to give it today. I heard several people talk that they were thankful for the pastors. But I want you to understand something. A pastor can stand out here and preach till his bottom jaw falls off. But if the congregation is not willing to pick it up and do something with it, then it's for nothing. I was told when I first started in the ministry that I am like a UPS driver. I deliver a package, and what is done with the package I have no control over. It's really the congregation that makes the church. See, each one of us is a member of the body. Each one of us is a, the Bible puts it, a lively stone, a living stone that is placed in a certain spot to build the building. Each one of us has a part. It's not just a pastor. It's certainly not just Ray. <laughs> it's all of us together. And this unity thing that I heard is so vitally, vitally important in a church. We have all kinds of ministries, and I tell you what, Lon, I appreciate what you're doing. This is fantastic. I appreciate, I may end up getting in my message. I better be careful. I appreciate what the worship team does. I appreciate what, what the, the youth pastor and the, the, the children's church, and it's all part of that. It's, it's, it's all of that together that makes this a church. It's us together. It's not just a pastor. Trust me, it is not just the pastor. Even, even if the pastor didn't do his job, the congregation can still carry on the work of the ministry. Amen? I've said for years that I would never be a pastor. I've seen, you know, and I say this a lot, and maybe I shouldn't. Gosh, I don't know. But I've been in a lot of churches. <laughs> Let me put it this way. I am the one that is thankful to be here. This is such an easy church for me because there's people that are hungry, there's people that are willing, there's people that are, that are hungry to do the work of the Father. And that makes my job, which is to teach, to train, to raise up, to edify, to build up the body, to do the work of the ministry, you're already, most of you are already there. This is easy for me. I just have to come up with the best sermon this side of the moon once in a while. But I'm so thankful for each one of you. Each one of you. Gosh, I can't, I can't even tell you how much I love this church and each one of you. And, and that's just not being melodramatic and all that. I sincerely mean that. I sincerely mean that. And I've told, I don't know how many times I've told Ray, 
man, there is so much in this church. It's incredible. And I'm talking about not just talent, even though that's here, but in giftings and callings and the hunger, the move of the, uh, of the Spirit. I'm going to get in part of this message, I think, because I just, I just feel it. I was praying the other day. Someone said something to me. I don't know who it was right now. It don't matter. But talking about things to pray into, you know, and, and several things were mentioned, and one of them was more musicians. I was like, yeah, more musicians. And I remember, and I was at home at my desk, and I usually lay back, lay back. I got my head back, and I'm looking out the window, and I'm praying about that. Lord, we just need more musicians. And I just really feel the Holy Spirit said, why? And I kind of thought that, you know, and usually when there's a question, I start going over myself. What, what's the deal? And I really felt the Holy Spirit saying, why do you need more? And the first few thoughts that came to my mind was, well, it'd be, it would be bigger. We could fill the stage. It would be bigger. It would be b better. But bigger and better is not always better. And what's wrong with what you have? And I thought about that for a second. I'm thankful for what we have on this stage. I love what we do here. I think we have got, one of, in my opinion, one of the best worship teams around. Why do, so why am I praying for more? Because it seems like that's what America is all about. More, give me more, give me bigger. And the more I get, then I'm, the more I've got to take care of, and the more I've got to take care of, that brings in more stress and more problems and more headaches and this. And then there's a new thing comes out, and I've got to have that one because this is outdated now, so I need more and more and bigger and better. And give me, give me, give me. And I felt the Holy Spirit saying, you need to be thankful for what you have. And I just sat in my chair and I started thinking about that. And that's where this sermon came from. And I came back and I told Ray, we were sitting back talking. And I said, you know, I really feel the Lord putting on me that if we're not thankful and not good stewards of what we already have, what makes us think that we're going to get anything more? If we're not thankful for what he's already given us, what makes us think that he's going to give us anything else? And I said, I really feel we need to start looking at what we have Start being thankful for it. Praise it and be good stewards of it. And then let God bring in the increase of more. Instead of us going out wanting more, we need more. We need, we need more chairs. We need more pulpits. We need more instruments. We need more of this. We need more flags, more lights, bigger building. When if we're not thankful for what we have, what makes us think we're going to get anything better? And so here's my contention. I don't give a rip what we have. But whatever we have, we better be thankful for it. We better be thankful for it. If you read through the New Testament, every letter in there says, I thank God for you every time I remember you. I thank God for you. I'm always thanking God for you. I thank God for you. Well, I'm telling you, I thank God for you guys. Every person that comes in this church, every member, every visitor, everyone that's going to come into this church, I thank God for them. And I do that every day. I'm thankful. If nothing ever comes out of our mouth, I think one of the, other than being in his presence, probably one of the most important things that we could ever be is thankful. An attitude of gratitude. Do you know when Jesus, 
Jesus never saw a problem, and I've shared this before, and you're going to hear it over and over again, probably every other year anyway. You know, it's one of our core values is a culture of thankfulness. Jesus was standing before 5,000 people. He says, let's feed them. Some little kid comes up and says, okay, here's this. He opens it up, five loaves, two fish. Here we've got five little pieces of bread. Here, Lon, feed the, go feed 250 people. Here's, 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 uh, here's five pieces of bread and two little pieces of bologna. Go feed the people with that. Would you see a problem in that? I sure would. But you know, Jesus never saw a problem in anything. He saw opportunity. And he took that, and it says he gave thanks. He didn't do a rain dance around it and splash oil all over it and cast the devil out of it and all. He didn't do that stuff. He said, Lord, I thank you for what you've given me. Now go feed the people. And he fed 5,000 people and came back and had 12 baskets of fragments left over. Mmm. Ten lepers standing over there. Jesus is walking by. He says, Lord, heal us. Jesus walks over and heals them. Takes off, goes on his way. He said, go, go show yourself at the temple. Do what Moses said to do. Go do it. And it says, and the ten took off and they were healed. They were healed of leprosy. This is something that's going to kill them. This was a death sentence. And they were healed on the way there. One stops turns around and comes back and finds Jesus and bows down and says, thank you. And he said, wasn't there ten? Where's the other nine? Why is it the only one? And it says he was a Samaritan, which Jews didn't like Samaritans. And, and here, here was a Samaritan, and he came, and it says, and he gave him thanks. He said, because you have done this, you have been made whole. The others were just healed. This one was made whole because he was thankful. Because he was thankful. You know, some of the most powerful things that we have in our arsenal is our mouth, speaking words. Ray brought up the election. Now, Lee said something the other night at EGS that made me think. She said, all this talk about election. It's always negative. Negative, 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 negative. Cutting people down, cutting people up. Lies here, lies. And all this stuff that goes on. And I sat back and thought about that and I thought, I wonder what the world thinks about us. After they hear all of that. And then one of the two is going to be our president. And we have said all this trash about that person and we make him number one in our country. Where have we fallen to? What have we made this to, this country? You know, this country was founded, you know, the people that founded this country, the, the framers of the Constitution and all that, they were not perfect people. And boy, there's some people that really bring that up. They weren't perfect. Why they committed adultery and they had affairs and they had illegal babies and blah, blah, blah. And they were liars, cheats, thieves. Probably so. But the thing is, they believed in perfect principles that came out of this book. They believed in perfect principles that came out of this book. And I personally believe the Holy Spirit helped them pen the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. I believe that. Amen. And they keep attacking our Constitution, trying to stop. And we have rights. Sure do. We got rights. Unless, of course, you believe in Jesus. But anyway, they keep attacking the Constitution. Those inalienable rights that we have from God, and they want to do away with that so that we, as a democracy, I'm going down the wrong path, and I know I am. As a democracy, we can vote what we want. See, a democracy is basically mob rule. 
Whatever the people want, they vote for and they get it. Whoever has the most votes gets what they want. So if we want abortion, we vote for it. If we want homosexual marriage, we can vote it in. If we want to lower the age of uh, uh, being an age of consent to 13 or 12, we can do that too. Hey, we can legalize marijuana because we like to do that. Prohibition, we throw that out and everybody can drink. 21 is just a little high. I think we need to lower that to 15 or 16. After all, 15 and 16 years old have enough sense to know when to quit drinking. Mob rule. They can vote whatever they want. This was a republic. A republic says the government controls the mob so that it works for the whole, not the group. And see, we've got so many groups that want so many things out here, and we're trying to give it to them because, hey, we're a democracy. Even the, even the Supreme Court does not rule on law anymore. They rule on what the culture is doing. And therefore, this Constitution is just a little old-fashioned. We need to get rid of it. We serve a God that never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It doesn't change. What was wrong 6,000 years ago is wrong today and will be wrong 6,000 years ago. I don't care how this election comes out, people. I really don't. That sounds almost weird because I, I just, what, just what Ray said. If we're putting all of our faith in the government to change this world, this country, and we're putting our eggs in the wrong basket. It is God that's going to change the nation. And if the church does not fulfill its duty, its part, its destiny, what it was called to be, we are to be a light to this country, then we better start being a light. We better start being that light. Because I see this country in a world of hurt. I see this country in a world of hurt, and I don't care who gets in. If both of them were elected, it wouldn't make a good president. And it, there, he couldn't, the, she, he couldn't fix it anyway. It's God. And even if this country, just like I said in Sunday school this morning, even if, should it happen, that this country fall apart and become a third world nation, that doesn't say the church falls apart. We are not connected to the nation. We are a kingdom of our own. We have been called out from. We are the kingdom of light, and we are to let our light shine no matter what. And so no matter how this election goes, we should not allow our mouth to speak anything negative, but we should be thankful for this nation we should be thankful for our president, whoever it is, and pray for the president, pray for the Congress, pray for their legislators, pray for the courts, pray for each other. We need to be thankful and in prayer. In fact, the scriptures say that we have to approach him. In fact, we had, used to have a song said that, uh, I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, and I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. But see, there's a way of entering in. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. In fact, it says that our prayers need to be full of thanksgiving. And I just kind of wonder if after, if we just start praying, Lord, give me, give me, give me, and we get tired of our give me's, does he even hear that if we don't even have a thank you in there? If we don't say one time, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Because I couldn't even talk to God if it wasn't for the blood on the cross. I don't have access, but I do now. And I am thankful for what he did. I am thankful for my wife. I am thankful that the truck didn't run over. I am thankful for this church. I am thankful for the leadership. I am thankful for the congregation. I am thankful for the Word of God. I am thankful that the Holy Spirit dwells inside me. Amen. 
And we of all people ought to be the most thankful. I am thankful. I'm thankful for this country. I am thankful that it was built on, on principles from God himself. And I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say. I am thankful, and I will continue to thank the Lord for all of it, for all of it, for the opportunity to stand here and speak. I am thankful. I am thankful. And each one of us need to watch what comes out of our mouth. But we need to be thankful. Of all people, we need to be thankful. So we have food downstairs, so let's stand and let's thank God for the food. Father, I thank you. I do thank you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for your presence here today, Lord. I thank you for each one that is here today, Father. And, Lord, I just ask a blessing upon each one that you meet their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I thank you for the love that you poured out on all of us through the cross of Calvary. I thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just hope that I can walk worthy of it. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the food downstairs. I ask your blessing upon it and the hands that prepared it, Lord. We just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. Hallelujah.